Hey guys, what's up? Sandu here. Sorry for missing for the last two weeks. I've got a flu, but I'm feeling much better now and hopefully new videos will be coming really soon. I know that some of you love my uh, duck reviews, so as I come back, I prepared a review for a really nice piece of kit, as you can see. This one is called Dena Flips Venus, an Artoir ladder duck. So, let's check it out. As I already explained in my RS review, uh, Dena Flips is very much against those uh, Delta Sigma modulators and chooses a more complex Artoir uh, resistor ladder duck network. Uh, you should know that the performance of an Artoir ladder duck is uh, relying a lot on the accuracy of those resistors. So the higher the accuracy, the clearer, the more detailed and more transparent the sound will be. Uh, so instead of going with hundreds of 0.01% uh, uh, precision resistors, as they did for RS and for uh, Pontus, uh, Venus and Terminator is using 0.005%, uh, uh, so higher precision resistors for a much clearer, uh, more detailed and more transparent sound. In terms of design, Venus, as of today, is the biggest and the heaviest duck I had the pleasure of testing at my place. It is even bigger than most of the integrated amplifiers I have tested and bigger than some power amps. It is scary just looking at it. At 1 cm and a half, it has the thickest aluminum front cover and the wall structure seems to be built to last a lifetime. All the screws were moved on the back panel for a super clean look. Those low intensity LEDs have a perfect brightness even in a dark room and I really like the raw aluminum look of the silver version. The laser engraving on the front and on the top is looking great too. I like that it has rounded edges on the top and on the front plate, so it will not damage my headphones when I'm handling them around. I like the flushed buttons on the face plate, I like the satisfying click sound they make when pressed, and the buttons are firmly attached to the device and are not wobbling around. It has the same width with the Sparkoslavs Aries, so I used it mostly with this one in my office, powering some inefficient desktop planar headphones. In my living room, Venus was connected to a Hegel H190 integrated amp, or to a Benchmark HPA4 as a preamp, plus a Ketchers S125 as a power amp, and then to a pair of Bouchard S400 loudspeakers, so I can definitely say that I have tested the Venus in all possible scenarios. As for connectivity, the front panel is quite simple to remember, so from left to right you have your digital input selectors, the selector digital input will be shown by an orange LED on the top, then you have the reversal button that will toggle the phase output, so LED on means that the phase is positive and LED off means that the phase will be negative. The big rounded button is your standby button, but in my experience I would leave the Venus powered on all the time. OS and NOS button will change from oversampling to non-oversampling mode, LED on means that non-oversampling mode is engaged, next one is the mute button, and then followed by the mode button that will select a different configuration for the I2S pinout uh, input. Please check the user manual for the exact I2S pinout changes. On the back you have seven digital inputs, so uh, basically any digital input you could possibly want. Uh, Quaxial, BNC, AAC, optical, I2S and USB input, so everything you want. And on the analog side you have your typical RCA and XLR outputs. In terms of tech specs, I opened the top cover so I could see all the magic for myself. And here they are, uh, four beautiful rows filled with high precision matched resistors. Four rows meaning that uh, four channels, meaning a true balanced signal. So Venus is using the highest grade resistors you can possibly have. So basically the same resistors are used in the much more expensive Terminator DAC as well. This Artoir network of resistors will ensure the smallest linear errors, a high decoding speed, super low digital noise and a low background noise. I see that each channel is having an independent high speed Altera Max 2 FPGA and between them I am seeing the highest performance femtosecond clocks from Cristec, the famous CCHD957. On the newest DSP board I can spot another crystal clock, an additional Altera FPGA a CPU plus a dozen of op amps. The DAC board is also populated by hundreds of audio grade electricity caps from Nikicon, and this is the reason Dena Flips is recommending leaving the Venus powered on all the time, and if you just turned it on, it will need at least 4 hours of warm up until it will sound at its best. Underneath the duck board I can spot a huge linear power supply which is completely encapsulated and can be opened up. 
But on the plus side, that thick metal alloy is used as a shield from nasty electromagnetic interferences coming from the power transformers. Inside it, dual O-core transformers are completely isolated using linear super regulators. There are multiple filtering stages for the analog and digital sections, ensuring a super low noise and an instant power delivery to the DAC section. Ok everyone, it's time to have a serious listen. Since Venus has more than 100 capacitors inside, plus two oversized uh, O-core transformers, it was just mandatory powering it on and playing some tunes on repeat. So after I received it, I just uh, plugged it in for a very quick listen. And it was uh, quite an interesting experience uh, since uh, I didn't hear any hardness or any stiffness as I was experiencing with uh, Delta Sigma DAX. So this time around, uh, Venus sounded just all over the place. Uh, much slower, but also much wider than I uh, expected. So uh, driver control was kind of weak, but you should know that those capacitors are still empty. So I couldn't spot a nice slam in the chest or just a nice uh, transit response. So I just left it uh, for one week connected to a laptop with some tunes on repeat. And I think it just passed 100 hours of burning. And as I understand, it had some burning uh, before that. And I just sat down, I took my headphones and uh, that was probably the moment when I was uh, searching for my jaw that just hit the floor. So such an unrestrained, such an effortless presentation with just layers, with uh, layers on top of other layers of information just flowing like a river towards me. So I experienced just the widest sound stage I ever heard in my living room with notes coming from awkward uh, angles towards me with a fluidity that I never thought was possible. In terms of tonality, when I first tested the Benaflip Saris DAC, it impressed me a lot with its uh, effortless presentation, but in the same time it rounded the frequency extremes, I mean the sub bass and the upper treble regions. Uh, that I didn't like that much uh, because I didn't, it didn't offer the slam that I was craving while listening to some faster and harder music. And also in the same time I wasn't hearing that uh, top octave with my uh, uh, jazz and with my rock tunes. So uh, Venus is very much different in this regard compared to Ares. So it has a really high density type of sound that uh, fills the gaps in the room. It makes the music sounding bigger than life somehow. So really bold, uh, carrying just a heavier tone, a much fuller tone. So it sounds incredibly effortless and really easy going. Uh, like it's disappearing and leaving all the rest of the electronics do its job. So with uh, Delta Sigma DAX, I'm normally picking up the tonality and the timbre quite easily, as all of those are somewhat uh, tilted towards, uh, let's say, towards details, maybe tilted towards speed or some uh, frequency range. But Venus is uh, not tilted towards anything in particular, so we just uh, feel like entering a big auditorium uh, filled with music, uh, you feel being the centerpiece, the mastermind, just picking up the notes you want, uh, listening to any range you want. So basically disentangling even the most crowded music on the planet. I have a fetish listening to older music like Django Reinhardt, and some of that music is almost unbearable to listen on uh, Delta Sigma DAX, and that is because they tend to accentuate all the flaws of, the, of that older music. I mean the background noise and uh, just makes it sounding uh, much more brighter and more artificial somehow. So listening to Django Reinhardt uh, minor swing on the Venus, it somehow bypasses all those cons that I've heard on the uh, Delta Sigma DAX and just makes everything uh, much more natural sounding. So uh, uh, guitar sounds much more natural, the rhythm is as jumpy and as, as melodious as ever. So I slowly nodded my head, uh, picking up the pace. Uh, background noise almost completely disappeared, so I uh, made this performance almost flawless, considering its age, obviously. As for the transit response, uh, the biggest flaw for me of the Denaflip Saris was actually the transit response, because that DAC wasn't keeping up pace with uh, faster engaging music like Electronica. And thankfully that uh, Venus is nothing like that, it doesn't have any of that, it sounds just impressively fast engaging, slamming with authority like Thor's Hammer on some particular songs. So since I'm uh, coming myself from a Delta Sigma DAC, uh, I mean the Matrix Audio Element X, it was much easier to me listening to the Venus in the oversampling mode. 
Uh, and since I'm recovering from a nasty flu that glued me to my bed for about seven days, I felt that I need uh, a kickstart to, uh, to raise my mood level. There is a one minute song that always does the trick for me. It's called uh, Dirty Shirt Lacho Drum. And from the first seconds I felt how my blood started boiling from the inside. My feet started dancing uh, themselves. Uh, it was just pumping positive energy and good vibes uh, directly into my brain. So Venus was just capable of keeping up with that song, so slamming hard and creating just a magical moment for me that raised my mood level, that braved uh, just a bit of life and ignited a much needed spark in me. In terms of sound stage, the best part that I liked about the RS DAC is that it pushed a very big and very believable stage not only in front of me but also around me. So uh, compared to that, Venus is, uh, is actually pushing that stage uh, past the boundaries of my imagination. So I don't just mean a much bigger stage than usual, so not at all. I mean a bigger and a much farther away uh, in every possible direction. So the gap between the musical notes uh, is just becoming bigger. Uh, more air is rushing in in the room to unrecognizable. So even bad mastered music, even uh, crowded uh, passages, even crowded music uh, start sounding airy, open and really wide. Only very few digital tonal converters were able to offer a very believable stage that briefs, that sends layers of depth information to the listener. And I truly believe that uh, Dana Flips Venus is probably among the best ones in terms of uh, that, in terms of soundstage and depth. Inspired by the painting The Birth of Venus by uh, Sandro Botticelli, which was made in the mid 1480s, uh, which is still uh, one of the finest paintings from the Uffizi Gallery in uh, Florence, Italy. I decided listening to Terry on the birth of uh, Venus Illegitima. So that crowded mix of uh, godlike voices, that heavy mix of instruments, created a very unforgettable, a very magical moment for me. So I was particularly impressed by the intensity of the male and of the female voices, uh, just carrying so much weight, so much emotions so much chilling uh, vibration went down my spine. So I was also very impressed also by the cymbals, but that sounded not only extremely clear, but also uh, free of any grain and uh, free of any uh, brightness at all. So when the composition just keeps rising and rising, uh, close to the end, uh, the stage somehow opened it up and I could listen individually to any note I would want. So uh, such a nice rendering of this song. In my 10 plus years of uh, reviewing uh, digital download converters, I can definitely say that uh, Tenafri Venus is the second one that I can uh, call a true genre master. So I will not hide the truth of who I am and what I like. So I can start my day by listening to Antonio Vivaldi, then I can move to some electronica uh, like uh, The Prodigy, Techno, Drum and Bass, then I can move to some jazz like BB King. Uh, Miles Davis, then I can move to some really angry metal tunes. So I love all my music equally well and um, some of it just represents a state of mind, maybe my mood level in a particular day or maybe I'm just recharging my batteries. There aren't a lot of ducks that will play back equally well, everything from classical to angry metal. So most of the time it's one or the other but never both of them. So I believe that uh, Dana Fripp's Venus is actually the first duck that can play back all the melancholy, all the sweetness, all the sorrow of a classical piece. Uh, it can render also the raw energy of electronic music, but also preserve the grotesque and the brutality of the metal music. So that's basically a first in my experience. And um, I believe that that oversampling and non-oversampling button is basically a godsend because I really enjoy listening to some uh, slower paced music and all types of acoustic music in non-oversampling mode. And if I want to rock out and if I want to increase the pace, uh, the slam and the precision, then I will engage that uh, oversampling mode that works just wonders with uh, faster and uh, heavier beats. So the more music I would add to the playlist, uh, Venus just played it all with its chin up like a true genre master. In terms of frequency response, uh, Venus seems like a very big departure from its smaller brother Ares. And where the youngster failed, uh, big brother was just showing how things should be done properly. 
So the more I listen to values connected to some uh, revealing amplifiers and transducers, the more I start understanding uh, how complete it is sounding in terms of uh, frequency response. Up until this moment, from tens of sources that I have tested, only three of them were able to awake some of the lowest octaves, and I believe that uh, Venus is definitely part of this group. So it presented sub bass information uh, with such an ease that I didn't need to stress myself to hear that. So it was always bold sounding, always uh, very rumbling, very present, going to the lowest depths, uh, having a really nice sustain and a really fast decay. So if sub bass information is important to you, then I think Venus can unleash the full force of the low end. Going up to the mid bass section, the same story basically uh, repeats itself. So it always just uh, full bodied sounding, very heavy and very nimble sounding, if the song is asking for it. So I like that I was able to hear uh, multiple layers of bass in a very detailed manner, let's say. It's not only going very low, but it's also incredibly clean sounding and a really transparent type of bass. In terms of mid-range, I will just say it from the start that there are very few Delta Sigma ducks that can render it properly. And by that I mean uh, soul grabbing, uh, really involving and really lifelike. So Art War Ladder ducks uh, always shined in the mid-range department the most. And obviously in this regard, uh, Venus uh, feels like the strongest gladiator from the Coliseum, unchallenged by anyone. So I never heard such an involving and musical duck and while listening to just to acoustic music, it just transforms into, into an act of pleasure. So if I'm engaging the non-oversampling mode, I just want to listen to music and uh, nothing more. So the grain from the music is just disappearing in such a manner that um, I have a feeling just the music is happening just right now uh, without any kind of conversion. Going on to the higher regions is done in a very natural way. So finally I can hear that uh, treble reaching uh, really high octaves, uh, but without any signs of roll-offs or anything like that. So uh, it's basically the first art to art ladder duck that can render it uh, really clean, transparent, detailed, even past 16 kHz area, but without any obvious flows. So when you listen to a lot of rock and to a lot of jazz, you are kind of prepared that at some point a cymbal or maybe a bell will bother you with a bit of brightness. Uh, and you expect basically the same coming out of Venus. So you hear the shimmer of the note, you hear the body of the cymbal, you hear it crashing on you, but yet not a sign of brightness, any sign of, bright, of dryness. So this is another skill learned by the art war designs that is making them popular, very popular among uh, jazz and among uh, rock listeners. So uh, Venus just presents a very detailed, a very clean uh, treble response, uh, but in a natural way without any sort of uh, digital glare. As a whole, Dana Flips Venus uh, presented a clear, a very extended frequency response without a single uh, roll off in any region. So there are drops or rises, uh, just a complete full bodied and a really textured presentation. If only all digital sources will sound this way as the Venus is sounding. So I did write an in-depth comparison between the Venus versus the Matrix Audio Element X, but since I don't want to make uh, this video super long or boring, uh, please check out my detailed comparison in my written review below, which you can find below. Going on to the conclusion, the Nafri's Venus is an incredible sounding duck from any point of view. So it will please all types of music lovers with sweet sonics, rich harmonics, with its full bodied and a grain free presentation. So I tried looking for the needle in the haystack, but the more I looked, the more I was just losing the find the blue decon game. So uh, is the Venus a perfect sounding source? No, it's not, but uh, it's the closest one to perfection I encountered thus far in my long journey. So it's the most natural, that's true, the most airy, the most deep and wide sounding duck. I experienced it at my place and sure enough, it impressed the hell out of me. If you have the cash and if you are looking for the next best thing, then a Fris Venus just might be the ticket to the musical wonderland you are just searching for a lifetime. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my uh, review. My full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support the channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. As usual, listen to my music, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.